Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Kevin Tech here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to talk about uh, working desktop support in financial services. Like um, they should say like BlackRock, Blackstone Group, uh, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Citadel, Bridgewater, like all these big financial firms. Like um, people want to know how do you actually get a job in IT support or desktop support going into financial services. So that's what today's topic is all about. But before we even get started with that, uh, first of all, uh, I want to say thank you guys for uh, helping me with my channel, getting myself back. I appreciate that. I appreciate the YouTubers. I appreciate the people that watch my content. Uh, second of all, happy holidays. It, uh, Merry Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas, I know I'm a, a few days late, but you know, I have to say that. Uh, and then third of all, uh, I'm super excited for next for next year for 2026. Community is great. Everyone's doing well and everything's going well. So um, everyone's helping each other. So should be good. We'll see what happens. So let me share my screen. I don't want to make this video too long, but I do want to go over this because I have done content on this in the past and people have been asking me about it. So let me share my screen real quick. So we're going to do screen three. And I'm not going to put the full screen. I don't need to do that. I'm just going to go over like, you know, like basic stuff. So this stops over financial services. So um, a lot of these companies, remember I talked about in one of my videos and I'm going to, I'm going to share and stop sharing again. Talk about one of my videos, talk about like how, if you have an MSP background, working managed service provider. So you refer an MSP company and MSP company basically provides services to other companies like technology, servers, um, mobile devices, laptops, et cetera, et cetera. They do provide services. They provide help desk, system admin, network admin, type security services, right? MSP company does a little bit of everything. And basically you're paying them and they put their infrastructure in place for that company. And then everything's managed by the MSP company. So I come from an MSP background. I, I worked like maybe three, four jobs at an MSP company. And one of the jobs I worked was an MSP company that was based in uh UK and Ireland. And um I got that, I got that job, and then that job helped me get my job working for financial services because a lot of these companies love that financial services background. So when I went in a job interview, they asked me about um mobile iron, which is mobile device management, is an application that actually allows you to install um email on your phone, but then you have to know about certificates, you have to know about troubleshooting the mobile phone on iphone android obviously when you install mobile iron now they have like this separate like workspace on the phone so it separates the it separates the phone account to two separate accounts one is like a work profile and then one is a regular profile if you're using moss 360 if you're using mobile iron some companies separate them so that's the thing and then uh i got asked about active directory office 365 all the common stuff so yeah, so that, let me share my screen again. So that's part of the norm. And yeah, so you need to have a college degree. I don't have that, by the way. I just have experience and MSP experience is what I have. So that's how I got the job. Uh, a lot of these companies ask for A+, Network Plus, ECNA, or Microsoft Certs. So you need to have a certification. Um, it's not a must, but it's a good thing to have. As I see people get jobs without having the A+. Plus just having a degree they have a degree from wgu or they have a degree that's like from an actual college of computer science um information systems degree etc cetera, etc cetera. so like if you have a degree it looks good on your resume but like a lot of people well, usually what i do is i tell them get experience uh work at an msp company i'm gonna stop sharing again sorry about that get experience work at an msp company like let that msp company pay for your search and then you start like getting A plus and a plus, you get all your service that you need. And then you already have a degree, so you don't have to worry about that. So you just graduated. So you, you try to get an, like, an internship uh, for an MSP company, get that, do like, do, get a job in there, get experience, get service, and then you can apply for financial services. Because financial services, I'll be honest with you, they pay a lot of money. They pay a lot of money for IT support, desktop support. And I talked about this before. I've been interviewing other YouTube channels asking me about that. So they do pay really well. The only problem with that, which is going to go uh, hand in hand with my PowerPoint slide, is soft skills. You have to be really good with soft skills. Because if you have horrible soft skills, you're probably not going to last a week. I've seen people get a job in financial services, and they literally lasted a whole week, and then they would quit their job or get fired, one or the other. Because um, you need to have a strong 
uh, a strong back. <laughs> you need to have good. You need to have good customer service. But you need to have. You have to be really, really good with patience with customer service and uh, financial services. Those guys are very aggressive, especially when they're trading. Uh, their Excel's not working. Um, they get frustrated. They get angry. They're trying to do something on their app. The app doesn't work, and then you have to troubleshoot it. And then like everything that they're losing money while they're trying to trade, or they're losing money while they're doing something. So they're gonna get annoyed, and, and, and you know, it's just it's part of the job. You're getting paid good money, but you have to have patience. So anyway, let me go to the next slide, and I'll share my screen again. So I've done videos on this before. Uh, I talked about um, not not Citrix, obviously. I have video, I have a video on Citrix, but like Citrix VDI like virtual desktops, you have to understand that Citrix does not work depending on the operating system. So if someone has like a, someone has an old operating system, you may have to downgrade Citrix in order for, in order for them to be able to access their desktop, which obviously is a security flaw. You shouldn't be even, you shouldn't even do that in the first place. You should not be rolling back to old version of Citrix workspace, right? That doesn't make any sense. But some of these companies have like, executives that have Citrix from like two, three years ago, and they're still using that version of Citrix because they don't want to upgrade to Windows 11 or they don't want to use Windows 11. So you're stuck with someone that has Windows 10 and they're still using Citrix uh, or Workspace from like a few years ago. And that's the same with Mac. Like some Mac machines, they they don't support the newest version of Citrix. So you may have to go one 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 version back. Uh, so that's, that's, that's how it is with Citrix. Uh, a lot of companies use Citrix for accessing their desktops. And then you have VMware. VMware, obviously, for VMware, if you're doing desktop support, you have to know how to create a brand new uh, virtual desktop. You have to know how to allocate uh, hard drive space, how to allocate memory. Obviously, you would shut down the, the VM. Uh, and and VM, VMware and Citrix go two and two together because a lot of these companies, you combine them together. Um, and... Something to know about that is like you, know, you have to know about partition hard uh partition hard drive space, and you need to know about uh when you're setting up when you're increasing memory RAM. Obviously, the machine has to be completely shut down. Obviously, you can't do anything. And also, you understand with VMware is that you want to make sure that the desktop you're allocating memory and uh hard drive space to, it's it ha it's in the right server cluster. So it has to be in the right server cluster. If you guys have experience, if you guys have experience with VMware, you know what I'm talking about. So it has to be on the right server that supports 16 gigs of RAM or 24, 24 gigs of RAM. You have to move the VM to another server, another cluster in order for um, the memory and hard drive space to work because some of these servers do not support 16 gigs of RAM or some of these servers, when you upgrade it, it does not support 24 gigs of RAM. So you have to move it over to another cluster, if that makes sense. If you have experience, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so uh, Bloomberg, I made a video on this before. Uh, Mechabicus, I never made a video on this. Maybe I did make a video on this a while back, but these are add-ons. So you have add-ons that people use to trade. You have to know about add-ons, or add-ins rather. So like troubleshooting add-ons, repairing add-ons, uh, figuring out why the person is trying to run a report on Bloomberg uh, Terminal. And then Bloomberg add-on, and then they're trying to like run a, a, a macro, so they're trying to run something and it doesn't work. You have to know how to deal with that. And I'm not saying you need to be an Excel like guru. I'm just saying that you need to know the basics of troubleshooting add-ons and add-ins, if that makes sense. So you cannot avoid that. I'm just saying right now like that. If you're doing financial services, you got to deal with a financial application. It does not matter. It does not matter what company you work at. Every company has their own unique in-house financial applications. So you have to know how to troubleshoot it. And obviously with um, technology and things changing, you have to know about, you have to have into an experience. You have to know about SSEM, Office 365, Active Directory. There's way more beyond that. Obviously there is uh, Cisco VPN and then MFA and MDM and all this other stuff. Well, this is like the basics. I don't want to go in depth with this, but SSEM is important because SSEM, you basically uh, have to know how to, uh, image machines, and you have to know how to uh, publish applications on the SSEM store. So what I mean by that is if you go into, so I'm going to, I'm going to look it up real quick. So SSEM store, it looks like this. I'm going to show you real quick. Uh, if I could find it. Okay, there we go. I found it. So 
Uh, it looks something like this. I know it looks a little, a little janky, a little ghetto, but it looks something like this. So they have like the SSEM store, and this is basically you add you add someone to a security group, and then they have access to that application. So they and this is going to be an Active Directory security group. You add them to a group, and then all of a sudden they're able to access that application. You have to refresh it, refresh it, and that would be in the control panel. So if you go to the control panel, and I I would have to make a video on this at some point, but SSCM would be in here. I just, my, my computer does not have it. So you would go in here and then you push out the policies if that makes sense. So it says get app and they would, they would get the application. So that, that's how that works. And uh, last but not least, uh, you have your soft skills. Remember I talked about soft skills. So you have to be really good at customer service. You have to be really good at having empathy. And you have to be really good at like, uh, managing expectations because a lot of these companies and a lot of these people that you work with, they have expectations of how things are supposed to work. So obviously you don't want to set the bar too high and you don't want to set the bar too low. You want to be somewhere in the middle where it is negotiable and the customer's not super angry at you, if that makes sense. So you have to be really good at the art of talking to people. And I'm not saying like, you know, like the anime show, like uh, was it like Naruto talk new jitsu uh, like he talking jitsu, like talk new jitsu is basically like he's talking to the villain, and the villain is like, yeah, yeah, you're right, we shouldn't fight anymore, you know. It's it, not like that, but like I mean, like you have to be really good at talking to people because people get crazy, right? And now stop sharing, and that's just part of the the norm. Like you're gonna deal with customers that are a little cuckoo, you know. <laughs> that's just part of the job, you know. You have to be really good with with patience and dealing with customers and um. Don't set that. Don't set the bar too high because if you do, they're gonna have expectations of that being the norm every single time you help them with a problem, or like, you know, um, when someone says, "Oh, it's a high priority," and it's not a high priority, they give you a ticket in the queue, and, it's high and you look at it, and I'm like, "This is all he has to do is just restart his machine." I don't understand. Like, so like you have to have the patience for this type of work. The pay is good. Uh. Uh, financially, they take care of you. Health wise, they take care of you. They pay for your lunch, breakfast, dinner, whatever. Uh, but it goes back to you. Like, how much patience do you have? Because you're gonna deal with a lot of silly issues, and you gotta have patience. You can't just be like, "Oh, this customer is dumb." Oh, how, how could you not restart your machine? How are you so dumb? You know, you can't say that to a customer. You can't. You're getting paid. I help the customer. And you should be grateful that they break something because this gives you a job. It gives you the opportunity to help them with something, right? So think of it that way. You know, like sometimes people don't don't see it that way. You don't see it like, like, why am I getting paid to deal with dumb issues? And you, that's that's true. But at the same time, the customer knows how to do their job, and that's it. They don't know how to fix a computer. They don't get paid for that. You get paid for that. So think of it that way. All right. That's enough ranting for today. But with that being said. Hopefully you have a wonderful day and yeah, you guys have a wonderful 2026 and I'm looking forward to 2026. See you guys later. Bye.